We are very excited to have you here today. Thank you for joining our session. Um, I want to make sure that you have a chance to know about our series. We have um, our six part series for navigating your career in a virtual world. This is session number five. Um, and we will have session number six closing out our series next month. And we hope you'll be able to join us at that session as well. Um, at this time, I want to invite Robin Doty, Senior Director for the Alumni Engagement Team and retired Commander from the United States um, Naval Reserve to welcome you. And she will also introduce our alumni presenters. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to session five of our Navigating Your Career in a Virtual World series, The Gratidio Guide to Transitioning Your Career. We will hear from six of our alumni today about their career transitions, and you'll also learn about some valuable career resources that we offer our Gratidio alumni. At the end of the presentations today, you will move into breakout rooms where you can have conversations with the presenters and fellow attendees to ask questions and get advice on how you navigate your transition, whether you're seeking a new career or opportunity or changing your industry or function. Uh, we are also celebrating a day of historic significance, Veterans Day, to honor our military veterans and thank them for their service to our nation. I would also be remiss not to recognize the 245th birthday of the United States Marine Corps yesterday, Semper Fi, right Brad? Um, I would like to take a moment to recognize some of our veterans that are on the Zoom call today. And we owe our veterans a debt of gratitude for the freedoms we all enjoy today. Um, I'll start with introducing retired United States Air Force Colonel and our new Pepperdine Student Veterans Affairs Director, Eric Lashinsky. Thank you for joining us today, Eric. And uh, I'm sure those veterans that are on the Zoom with us today, you'll be hearing more from Eric in the future. I'd also like to acknowledge two of our alumni speakers that will be speaking today, Army veteran Anthony Brown and Marine veteran Brad Tatum. Also, I do believe we have some veterans joining on the call, Jennifer Garrett, uh, who is a JAG officer in the Army National Guard. And if we have any of you that are on the call that I didn't mention, if you could kindly just go in the chat and put your name in the chat so we know who you are and you can be recognized accordingly. Um, thank you again to all our veterans for your steadfast sacrifice and unwavering dedication to our country. We are also pleased to really have an exceptional lineup of speakers for you today. First, you'll hear from Laura Woodward, MSOD alumni who transitioned from technology leader to co-founder and CEO of Leadership Performance Company. Next will be Anthony Penman, PKE 134 MBA alumnus who transitioned from operations to financial services. Next will be Brad Tatum, our military veteran and MBA and MSML alumnus who transitioned from Marine Officer to Engineering Manager. Next will be Mary Beth Towers, MIB alumna, who transitioned from Entertainment to Professional Sports, followed by Henry Rubello, MIB B and BA alumnus, who transitioned from Professional Athlete to Corporate Executive, and then rounding our panel off with Anthony Brown, EMBA alumnus and military veteran who transitioned from Army NCO to healthcare IT executive. Please remember your Grazio alumni network can really be a tremendous valuable asset to you throughout your career. As many of you know that the primary way you find your employment is through your connected network. Don't forget too to keep us posted about your career journey, journey as you have successes along the way, as well as share your knowledge and experiences by being a mentor or speaking in a classroom or serving in another volunteer capacity. We are so grateful. We could not do this without the support of our alumni. Lastly, we hope you will consider the Gracidio School as your lifelong learning provider and a resource to assist you with career support 
forums to network and ways to forge meaningful connections. Now I'd like to turn it over to our sure. alumni who will share their career transition experiences, starting with Laura Woodward. Laura? Thanks, Robin. Uh, again, I'm Laura Woodward and um, happy to be able to share a brief summary of my transition journey. Um, so my career started out in IT. I did not plan for that, uh, was never my intent. I kind of fell into the IT space. I started as a business analyst and I just really loved the work and started doing a variety of other jobs in IT, learning the technology, um, uh, moving into all different fields, eventually then going into leadership and progressing in the management ranks to eventually ending up at uh, executive leadership and a CIO. Um, you know, technology was never really my jam. Uh, again, I kind of fell into the career, um, but what I really discovered during that time, um, more than, oh gosh, I hate to say, probably 30 years in, in the industry, but what I really loved uh, was the people side of IT. And that's where my passion and my energy was and really my focus, especially the last 10 to 12 years of my career. And um, if you uh, are in or plan to be in the IT space, especially if you get into the senior or executive leadership levels, um, one thing that um, is more often true than not is at one point in time in your career, your position will probably be restructured or eliminated. And that happened to me. Um, in fact, it happened three different times in my career. And the last time um, was very planful, knew it was coming. Um, and I decided uh, I was gonna take a break and do a little reflection. Um, while I had a very um, successful career and lots of wins, uh, lots of energy around that, I didn't really wanna go back into the corporate space and run another IT organization. Having said that, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. And so I, I knew it had to do something with people. I wanted to make a difference with people. I just love helping people be the best that they can be, no matter what role or function. And so I went out like a lot of people in transition and did a lot of networking. And, um, in my uh, exploration of networking, I really discovered the field of OD, organization development, and I just fell in love with it. I, I only knew what it was on the surface. I really started doing some research and I, I just knew this is where I had to be. There was something about this that really resonated with me. So I made the commitment and started looking for a graduate program and that's how I ended up at Pepperdine and uh, went through their MSOD program, the by far, hands down, with all uh, sincereness, um, the best learning experience of my life. And I graduated in 2014. And besides just a solid base of information and connection to just amazing people, um, it opened up just so many possibilities for me. And it really gave me a lot of things to consider and to choose from. And I'll be honest, by the time I finished with the program in 2014, I, I, I kind of knew where I wanted to go or what I wanted to do, but I wasn't 100% sure. But I was, I was confident enough and I had enough support of my community, my Grazio Dio community. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go out and do something different. And so the way I started was as an independent consultant. And um, I also became a certified coach. And I went out and did work uh, as an independent consultant uh, in the space of OD and, and coaching. And I did that about a year. And honestly, I absolutely hated it. I hated being an independent consultant. I found it, for me, um, lonely. And um, it just seemed like I was going from one job to the next. And what that provided for me was really realizing that I wanted to create something bigger than me. Um, so I started exploring what that 
was. And one night uh, I was having wine, a glass of wine with my now business partner, uh, talking to her about how I wanted to create something bigger. Um, I think it's a company. I, I want to make a bigger impact with people, something that's bigger than me. And uh, she's like, I'm all over that. Um, let me join you on this. I think this is something that we can do together. So we spent probably the next six to nine months kind of formulating what we think that should look like. And then ultimately decided to form a partnership and start our company. Um, by the way, one of the tips there is, um, I think all companies should start over a glass of wine. That I highly recommend it, best way to start out. And um, so there was born our company, The Disruptive Element. Um, so The Disruptive Element is a leadership performance company. Uh, we ignite potential in people throughout any organization. We do that by providing services in the space of OD, leadership development and coaching. And what makes us unique is that we bring coaching and brain science into everything that we do. And so that it's insanely practical and meaningful to every human being, every individual that we touch. Um, so when we started our company, uh, we knew we couldn't do this alone. And so I, I just can't emphasize enough the strength of the Grazia Dia Alumni Network. Um, my gosh, the resources, the support, um, just amazing. We also formed our own board of advisors um, a wealth of information and support on this journey. And uh, we are now uh, over six years in business. I'm happy to report that we've had double digit growth every year since our inception. And this year uh, we were recognized by Inc. 5000 as one of their fastest growing private companies in the US, uh, ranked at number 1336. So super, super proud of that accomplishment. Um, it's been interesting um, career journey, uh, an interesting 2020 to say the least, but I'm so excited and uh, wouldn't change anything about my transition. Really, really happy uh, where I've landed and where our company has landed. Um, really looking forward to, for many reasons, looking forward to 2021. Um, so thank you. Very happy to meet everybody today. And I would love to hand it off to Mr. Anthony. Gosh, I don't even know how to come. Uh, I don't even know how to come back from that. So uh, nice job. Um, so um, nice to be here today with all of you. Um, gosh, I have a little bit of a journey. I don't know if seven minutes. I got to kind of cram this in for seven minutes because I've had a very interesting journey. Um, first of all, my photo, uh, that was uh, the first photo up there is my PKE photo. That was about 25 pounds heavier. <laughs> so all the great food that they fed us during, uh, that pepper diet fed us during classes. But um, so yeah, so I've had an interesting transition. Um, I worked for a company that you guys might have heard of just recently. Uh, that they're having financial trouble. They, they, the, no cause of mine, of course. Uh, but I worked for the Hertz Corporation for 15 years. And um, I was so grateful to that company. Um, it actually afforded my flexibility and ability to be able to attend the PKE program. So I'm forever grateful to them. Uh, but during that time, uh, what I learned and appreciated the most about working with that company is that they continue to elevate it, elevate us and educate us and reward us uh, based on performance. It wasn't, you know, there was complete transparency throughout that organization as it related to promotability. And for me, I appreciated that, you know, I was able to get my JD and then I said, hey, look, Pepperdine came along. And the reason why I attended the PKE program is I actually had an employee that worked underneath me that I had the pleasure of mentoring and eventually promoting. And, and then he told me about this wonderful program. And he's like, Hey, Anthony, how about, you know, you, you want, you want to uh, explore, you've always wanted to get your MBA. Uh, why don't you explore this program? And so then of course, if any of you guys know Pearl, uh, 
con, you know, Pearl, she, she, she definitely had her hand in it and <laughs> convinced me that, that Pepperdine was the right choice. Um, but fast forwarding here, um, so when I left the, when I graduated in 2015, um, I was armed with my tools and ready to go. And I think the PKE program, while it wasn't, may not have been designed for me to necessarily leave the industry, um, it certainly propelled me to want to learn more. Um, and I wanted to get into something that was a little different. And because the background of my MBA was more strategic, um, I wanted to do more strategy. So I said, okay, you know, let me explore. So after leaving 2015 and 2017, I got recruited um, after graduating, but in 2017, I got recruited, worked for a real estate investment trust company, probably you guys know it, called uh, Public Storage. So I was like, okay, big company, very uh, financially stable, uh, good opportunity, but the leadership for me just wasn't there, right? Not what I had been used to and probably spoiled a little bit after 15 years at, at the Hertz Corporation. Uh, but I knew what le good leadership looked like and I didn't get that there. So then fast track, um, I was still in operations when I uh, left there, uh, but then another opportunity came with a DSO um, and they gave me an opportunity to be a stri uh, strategic business planner. So I was like, great, this is what I've been trained for, opportunity of a lifetime, I'm ready to go, right? And sure enough, you know, we just, you know, so it's interesting because when you when you're used to being around smart people and people that are are you know have a growth mindset, and then you come to a place where you know the report the person you report into, there's no congruency, uh, very incongruent. Um, then you feel stifled a little bit, and so I went with big ideas and and, and trying to learn. I was in a new space, new industry. I learned as much as I could, took all the stuff that I learned uh, from my MBA program. And I was like, okay, I'm applying it now, I'm just going. And I, they looked at me during meetings like, what are you talking about here? What are you, we don't understand you, we don't know what's going on. So it just, there was a lot of confusion and, and but later I recognized that maybe this isn't the place for me um, because we were so, uh, uh, disconnected in terms of where I saw my career going and what I wanted to do, I was like, I, I, I can't do this. But what's interesting enough, what brought me to financial services started in 2015. And it started with my cohort, really, when I looked at where they were, and I learned from them, I'm like, these guys, I had guys that were in wealth management, they were advisors, they were really kicking butt in their industries. And, and, and then I was like, I'm interested in that. I, I wanna do more of that. So I had been contacted by a company and you guys probably know what New York Life. And when they contacted me, I was like, okay. You know, they're a mutual insurance company. Okay, they've been around 175 years. Okay, they got stability. I did my homework and I had been, con I had actually been contacted since I, when I graduated, I've been contacted by five different financial companies. And so when I vetted them all out and I looked at the learned, learning the difference between a mutual company and, and, and all that stuff, I'm like, maybe this is for me but I didn't quite make that change. COVID-19 was my best friend. And I'm gonna tell you why quickly. When I made that change, I was up against the wall. Um, I had dismantled my team, furloughed my team. Uh, and this was less than a year ago. And, and it just so happened that I got that call again from New York Life. And I said, well, guys, this must be kind of telling. And uh, they called me five years ago, and now they're calling me now. Maybe this is where I'm supposed to be. And um, when I dismantled my team and my boss says, well, I don't know what you're going to do now. I said, I know what I'm going to do. I said, you know, I'm going to make this easy for you. 
I said, I'm going to leave um, because I'm going to start a career in financial services. And I had been prepping myself for the last two years before I got to this point. I was like, let me get some, let me get my registration underneath my belt. Let me study, let me understand. So I was prepping and I was using my social network to really connect with people in that industry. And I would take meetings as much as I could before COVID-19 so that I understood the industry. And that's what really landed me here. So I know that was a lot to try to digest, but uh, you know, seven minutes is not enough time to really go through, through every little thing. But I think you guys get the point, right? I mean, I was put up against the wall. I had an opportunity to do something I've always wanted to do. And I just pulled the trigger and did it. So um, I'm sorry, I, I can't think of who's next here. <laughs> No worries. And Anthony, you bring up a great point. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to drop it in the chat, but there definitely can be more conversation um, when we go into our breakout rooms. But um, thank you. Thank you for that. We're going to move it to Brad next. Well, uh, thank you, Anthony and, uh, uh, and Nicole and everyone for putting this on. Uh, and thank you to all the veterans who are out here. Um, who, who came on to join us and, and you know I appreciate it and Nicole thank you to your your please extend my thanks to your father as well so uh, I know there's a lot of veterans out here um, and family members who are that and so uh, ho hopefully this is a, a, a small opportunity to try to give back and uh, and give some opportunity or some uh, help navigate some of the same uncertainty that I went through when when I went through this ch transition about 10 years ago so uh Go back to 2010, January 2010. I just got home from Iraq. It was my second deployment, and uh, uh, I, I, in my head, I was doing 20 years in the Marine Corps active duty, and I didn't. When I got out of college, that was what I wanted to do. It was my dream, and and it was an organization that I believed in heavily then, and I still believe in now. Uh, that's why I'm still affiliated as a reservist. But the uh, um, at the time I got home in January 2010, I had been gone for two and a half out of the last four years and uh, either, either working up for or executing a deployment. And that took a toll on my family, took a toll on my wife. I missed, uh, I missed four of her birthdays in a row. I missed four of our, uh, uh, our first four wedding anniversaries actually. Uh, I missed her college graduation. Yeah, basically if it was important, um, the Marine Corps took it away. So uh, I got back and thinking that, okay, this is the time for to transition or to settle down, go into a less demanding billet, maybe to go recruiting or somewhere where I could stay home with my family for a while. Well, the institution had different ideas and uh, they came to me and said, you did such a great job as the uh, as the number two guy on that last deployment, we would like you to take over a team that's going back right back out the door in August. So I, I've been my third deployment in in three years, and I told them like I, I'm just I can't do that. And uh, uh, the military has has an inst um, has a way of saying like, well, I don't really care what you want. This is what the institution needs, and so you're going to do this. Uh, that. That didn't work for me. The only card I had left to play was to leave active duty. Uh, so I went in January from getting home from Iraq to taking some time off uh, post-deployment leave, spend some time with my family, and then coming back. So from March till June, that three-month window, I went from thinking I was still going to do 20 in the organization to uh, um, by about mid-May, actually, I was I, I was standing on the street corner, so to speak, saying, now what do I do? Uh, so I had no plan. Uh, it was not a transition that I would recommend. I would not recommend uh, anybody follow that particular part. Um, so as you heard Anthony talk about, like he was prepping for some things for, for, uh, for uncertainty for years. That's, that's probably a better takeaway than just um, finding yourself standing on the street corner wondering what's next. Um, Fortunately, I, I, had a, uh, I had a friend who was in, uh, who, who knew some, uh, some folks who ran an activity where they do um, munitions engineering or munitions test engineering. And I'm an artillery officer and they needed somebody who had artillery experience. 
that's a pretty small skill set to have an engineering degree and artillery experience. He put me in touch with that. And so that was my first job. It was not, it was not like a career growth job, but it was something to keep me uh, above water. Uh, so in 2010, I, that's when I first found Pepperdine and when I first started looking at uh, the GI Bill, uh, applied late 2010, got accepted and started the, uh, the fully employed MBA program in 2011. And uh, i tell you what, the, the reason why I picked Pepperdine was the post 9-11 GI Bill was brand new in 2010. It, it just rolled out in like 2009, 2010. Pepperdine was the first school in California to offer the uh, Yellow Ribbon Scholarship. And uh, they were, all the other universities in Southern California at the time were not very welcoming of veterans. There were no veteran service organizations and uh, most career counselors would rather not talk to me. Uh, Pepperdine, on the other hand, they welcomed me with open arms. Uh, it, was, it was an amazing experience. Uh, I didn't feel different. I didn't feel chastised. I didn't feel unwelcome. Um, that, that it was, how can we help you? What can we do to make you successful? And, and I tell you, I took advantage of every resource that the university offered and I, can't, I, I cannot thank the university and the people of Pepperdine enough for what they did for me and how they helped me uh, develop into uh, the career that I'm in today. So I, 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 I took advantage of the MBA program. I stayed one more year. I uh, still had a little bit of uh, learning that I wanted to pursue and still had some GI Bill left and uh, was able to get my second master's degree in the MSML program, which is also another tremendous program. And uh, I want to say uh, thank you to Carla Suarez, who's out, who's uh, attending today, supporting me being here. Um, she, if it wasn't for her, I, I would not have made it through that last year of school. So she, she was a tremendous friend and, and she still is. And so thank you, Carla, for that and for being here for me today. I, I really appreciate it. So from that role, um, after I got my, my graduate degrees uh, through networking and, and not through attending formal networking events, but just through people that I knew, um, I found another Marine who was running a job at uh, NTS, or National Technical Systems. Uh, and it's a testing organization. So I went from Marine officer, artillery officer, to artillery test engineer, to now a test engineering uh, department manager for national technical systems, and this was in aerospace fluid systems. Uh, it was a not, not there was enough indirect uh, connections between the the different functions of engineering and test where I, I I could bridge that, but. The guy who interviewed me, he was a Vietnam vet, uh, spent some time in Hue and in Quezon, if you're familiar with those parts of uh, Vietnam. And, and he knew that my experience was very similar to his own. And he said, if you could have gotten through that, then there's nothing that this job can throw at you that you can't handle. So he took a leap of faith on me, knowing that my engineering experience wasn't directly lined up with what they were looking for, but uh, he needed someone who could come in and, and lead a team and he gave me that opportunity. Uh, I did that for five years and then uh, saw an opportunity to join the, the Skunk Works with Lockheed Martin. And, and uh, that so happened to be um, looking for a skill set in fuel systems and hydraulic systems uh, and other fluid systems within an aircraft that um, I had developed some knowledge and expertise in and running the team there at NTS. And that got me uh, my foot in the door for the interview. So that was the first actual like formal interview that I had to do uh, in my transition uh, and that got me to where I am today. Um, and I tell you what, it's, it's a great organization. Uh, it's some of the smartest people I've ever met. And, and uh, I certainly, uh, it, it keeps me on my toes to, to be my best every day, but I wouldn't have the confidence to, to do that if it wasn't for uh, the confidence that I built through my education and my time at Pepperdine because that's, it was very hard for me to understand how do I go from conducting combat operations and trans, translate that into meaningful, um, meaningful actions and meaningful ways to, to lead a team or, or contribute to an organization uh, in a civilian sector. And through Pepperdine and through that education is, is what was able to make me make those connections because it was there it's there and that's what I want everyone to understand is 
the, like the skills you had in the military, they are definitely applicable in the private sector, but understanding how you connect from one to the other, that's a challenge. Thank you for that, Brad. Very detailed experience that you shared. I know your uh, breakout room is gonna be very um, exciting and, and inspirational to those, those veterans that are looking for more opportunities. So thank you. Thanks, Nicole. You're welcome. All right, moving to Maribeth next. Hello, everyone. Happy to be with you all. So listening to um, everyone so far has been has been interesting. And I think I'm going to back up one before I moved from entertainment to sports, because I think it has some there's a there's a nugget in there that I'm listening to other folks came to mind. And that is that was when I made the break and um, from my very early career, I started out uh, out of college in the retail industry. So I worked for department stores, specialty stores. I was a buyer for quite a few years. And it was a point where they were ready to promote me into a DM and GM position for those of you who are familiar with that vernacular in the retail world. And it was when I was not excited about that promotion, I realized this is not an industry that I wanna stay in. That's when I chose to go back for a mid-career uh, MBA with Pepperdine at that point. And it afforded me an opportunity to, to sort of break from, because I'm sure some of you have run into this experience where there is a typical reaction of HR departments to want to look at your exact job titles or your exact career path and then drop you back into that same career, same title. And I was running into that. So when I was speaking to people, they were running to put me back into some form of the retail world. The M MBA offered me a complete break. So when I came out of the MIB program, I was able to really broaden my, my scope in terms of what I looked at. And one of the industries being in LA, Hollywood obviously is a fairly dominant uh, uh, industry in that city. I had started to look into the consumer products portion of the big studios. And the reason that that was interesting to me, and this is the other thing I think that's, that's something to think about is there's threads that you can pull through from one uh, industry or one job that you've had and pull it through and utilize that as a stepping stone to the next thing, but make enough of a change that uh, it, it satisfies your need to, to make a change. So for me, that was the, the one thread that I looked at when I went to the entertainment industry and looked at consumer products was ultimately the consumer products is a retail play, right? All the products that the licensees create uh, end up at, at retail. So that retail experience, I felt was a, an advantage for me looking at, at that uh, industry. And it so happened, and this is where I made a note to myself that when we talk about network, I think there's a tendency to think about your network as professional network. And I think over the years, I have found that in quite a few instances, my next best conversation has actually come from somebody that isn't necessarily a professional uh, colleague or a professional contact. So as an example, I was serving on the LA County Museum of Art, Art Museum Council. It was a fundraising council. And I was co-chairing one of our big fundraising events and happened to get to talking to the woman that I was co-chairing with. Turns out her husband, when I talked about this, you know, consumer products aspect of the entertainment industry, turned out that her husband, Gary Kaplan, was a, a long-standing uh, consultant in that space literally knew every major person at every major studio in Hollywood. And she said, oh my God, you and Gary have to have lunch. He'll introduce, you know, he'll give you the scoop on everybody. He'll introduce you to a bunch of people. That's how I got into to, uh, working with Warner Brothers. And so I think there's an example where when you're thinking about a transition, think about literally just talking to everyone that you are in touch with, whether it's work colleagues, whether it's, you know, again, outside interests, like in this case with the Art Museum Council, uh, and friends, because you just never know who knows somebody else that is in, an, in a space that you might be interested in. So that gets me to Warner Brothers. And like I said, the thread that got me there was the retail. So that was a time when 
the big studios, Warner Brothers, Disney, Fox, all of them had started to recognize that they needed to have a very direct relationship with the big retailers out there. So the big box stores, the Targets, the Walmarts, and the, at the time Kmarts of the world, you know, the, the um, department stores and so on. And that is not something that they had, had done. And in fact, Warner Brothers was the first studio that created a retail business development group. And they had only put it in place for about six months when I started talking to them. And I had gone in interviewing for a marketing position and they, kind of asked me to reconsider and, and go into this retail development uh, team. And when I heard about what they were trying to do, it made sense. I had a retail background. They had first started to populate that group with sort of more standard marketing type folks with more standard marketing background and found that that wasn't terribly effective because retailers, if any of you have been in any sort of the retail industry, they are where it's an it's an industry that's that's very uh, uh, specific in terms of they they you have to speak their language you have to understand their world or they're very dismissive of you and so that my ability as an ex buyer to walk into and talk to a buyer talk to a GM and speak their language was beneficial to them. While I was at Warner Brothers, I ended up going, I flipped between uh, working for the retail development team, then I went and worked for the licensing team. So the licensing team in a consumer products uh, group at Entertainment works with all of the manufacturers. Uh, so negotiating the agreements and then mostly product development. The, I did a quick stint at Fox and what got me there was again a thread. They were looking to start up their own retail business development team. They were, they were a little bit late to that, to that game uh, and they didn't have anybody to, to create that for them. And so it was an ex colleague of mine in the legal department that had gone over to Fox who made a recommendation to the head of that division. Hey, I think I know someone who might be able to open this division for you. So went and opened that up. It was about uh, a year and a half into working with Fox when and it was the Fox Kids division specifically. They uh, Fox sold off sold off that division to Disney, and so there was some conversation of moving to Disney. But coincidentally, uh, the woman who had been the head of the apparel licensing group at Warner Brothers uh, was moving on and. Uh, the woman who headed up the entire consumer products group got in touch with me and said, hey, would you be willing to come back? So, uh, and that was, a, that's a, as thinking back again, it's like maintaining the contacts with the people that you've worked with in the past is also something that I think is incredibly beneficial because in this instance, she literally wanted me back into the organization, but at other times it's those people which got me to sports that have put me in touch with, with the next person that I needed to talk to. So went back, I'm gonna skip a couple of, of iterations at Warner Brothers. One of the last positions that I held there was an incubator group that they had created. It was called New Initiatives. It was very much an exper exper experimental uh, department. And so I knew when I took that position, there was a risk, and I was interested to hear Laura say the same thing, there was a risk that it was going to be eliminated. And I knew that going in, so I had to be prepared for that. And sure enough, you know, we were, we were in that uh, area for a uh, couple of years, and then they decided that it was, it was not a group that they want to continue with. And so uh, at that point, I ended up leaving the studios for about a year and was going to take some time off. And I did some project work. And so I got in touch again with folks that I knew in the industry. I did a project for Universal, did some work for Activision, you know, just was kind of out there saying, hey, if you need some help on a short term basis. And it was again an ex colleague or a colleague at Warner Brothers uh, that I had worked with who introduced me to Kathy Carter, who was the woman who brought me into Major League Soccer. So I head up consumer products at Major League Soccer. So that was the thread that brought me there. And it was interesting because uh, the, the common factor was we had briefly at Warner Brothers represented some of the big. Uh, European clubs, so Manchester United, FC Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain, Juventus. Uh, we, had, we had done some licensing for them in North America because they didn't have a, a presence here. So we were acting as their agent in North America. 
And it was Kathy Carter knew the head of our international licensing team. Uh, and she had just recently been made president of the co commercial side of Major League Soccer, gained consumer products as one of her departments and really had no uh, experience in that space. Her background was more in sponsorship. And so she had gotten a hold of, like I said, this the head of international and was trying to talk him into, you know, coming to New York. And he said, no, I'm not ready to make that change. But again, I think I know somebody who could help you out. So she and I met briefly and she was ready to like have me move out to New York and so on and so forth. I was like, wait, let me let me hold up here. Uh, I will write you a business plan. I will write you a two part business plan. And if we agree at the end of that process that it's the right thing to do, then I'll be happy to consider come work, working with you. So that's what we did. I worked remotely with her for almost a year. First did a big scrub of just, you know, their business as it stood, because this was a new space for me in terms of sports. Obviously the consumer products piece was, a, was something familiar, but it was a whole new industry. So had the chance to really analyze their business, write the business plan for them, which needed to get approved by the, by the board of governors. Uh, the owners, when that happened, then I moved out to New York to basically execute against, against the business plan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, up next we have um, Henry. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everyone. It's with great pleasure that I'm here, of course, with all of this Pepperdine community. And I have to say that Pepperdine is a super special place and I'm very fortunate to actually be a alumni from the Silver College and also the Business School. And in my testimonial, you know, I'll basically tell you a quick story of my personal international uh, journey. Uh, going from being a water polo athlete, native of Brazil, where by the way, water polo is not a popular sport at all. It's all about soccer. Um, to then making into the corporate world, I worked as an executive for Nike for over 20 years and have also founded two uh, different companies. And at the end of this, also, I will share with you some thoughts about, of course, my time at Pepperdine and also uh, some tips for those of you who, of course, are looking to transition your career. So, you know, maybe they, these tips can, can help you navigate through those, uh, through those times. So everything is started in Rio. De Janeiro, where I grew up. Uh, I had no English, um, but I had a dream to study and live abroad. And Pepperdine gave me this amazing opportunity, basically bringing me as, of course, an athlete uh, with a full athletic scholarship, um, which was, again, for me, the way it opened the world, um, you know, for my career. Uh, from there, actually, the day after I graduated from the Silver College, I was already on a plane to play for a club team in Perth um, in Western Australia. So I was there playing professionally in the um, Australian National League. After returned to the US to basically continue my studies at this time uh, in the massive international business, which at the time was a two year program being one year in the US and one year or the second year in Germany. And, you know, in that time, um, you know, when I was in Germany, of course, finishing my studies and also playing for another professional uh, club there, uh, part of the kind of a graduation requirement was to do an internship in a company in Germany. So that's kind of how basically I got started as, as, as an intern in Nike Germany. Uh, from there, uh, as I mentioned, you know, 20 years, uh, mainly in marketing um, kind of capabilities, leading uh, global marketing campaigns, such as for Nike Sportswear, which is the lifestyle uh, side of the business, uh, Nike soccer, Nike football, uh, the Olympic games, also uh, FIFA World Cups. And all of that also, I think with the opportunity to spend a lot of time in Asia, uh, a lot of time in Latin America, in Europe, and also living in different countries such as, you know, Mexico, Germany, Brazil. Um, and then, you know, also through that time, I have left Nike twice. So in my career there, I left the company two times. The first time um, was uh, back in 99, 
just before the uh, Sydney Olympics. I had a dream also to play in that Olympics. So I was training or playing full time, also working full time and I was exhausted and I felt that I needed to focus on that moment and decided to resign. So I resigned from Nike the first time. And I would say that I had a little bit of a of changing plans because I had a, I had a unfortunate um, injury. I broke my right hand playing one week after I left the company. So it was a super cold shower in my, of course, plans. And at that moment, I decided to actually, um, of course, I was cut from the team too. And then I decided to actually start the first company there. Um, so for a few years, I was doing some marketing consultancy and Nike invited me back at this time in Mexico. So I returned to the company, spent another 15 years or so, as I mentioned, in different, in different roles and um, decided again to leave again at the end of 2018. Um, recently, I have also founded a second company, uh, another marketing firm, which is basically, um, you know, the E77 marketing. So this firm is focused on helping brands and, and companies to, you know, build their brands kind of globally, to engage consumer, do some activations across the globe. But all those companies that have also a force for good, really doing positive things with impact for, you know, for, you know, people, for consumers, for everyone. So as of course that, you know, was, uh, I would say this kind of a, in a summary way, uh, my journey. Um, so also a few thoughts around my Pepperdine time too. At first, I would say that, hey, it gave me, again, this global perspective, not only brought me from Brazil, gave me this opportunity, you know, doing the graduate school also, we had a study trip to China where we spent almost two months there to also, uh, of course, study in Germany. That really gave me this, again, global view, which I think was for me super important because I have a lot of love for travel, for different cultures. So that was great. Then also Pepperdine kind of taught me how to learn. So learning how to learn was, I think, super critical as to navigate different moments in my career. And then also, as I think a few of you know, the speakers already mentioned, this is an amazing um, networking tool that you have. I mean, the group of professors, alumni, students, I recommend definitely that you, know, you leverage this because it's uh, something that will help you throughout you know, your career journey. And as a few tips to kind of finish off, just as uh, some, uh, some ideas from my personal experience, I would say that first of all, follow your passions, follow your dreams, listen to your gut instinct. You know, especially, you know, in those tough moments, you know, knowing kind of that you have a kind of goal and you're clear about where you're going. And, you know, that will help you, of course, uh, you know, face some of the difficulties that you have along the way. Also, be ready, you know, prepare yourself because it will not be easy. It will not be easy. So make sure that, you know, you kind of do your homework and, you know, prepare yourself for those kind of tough times. If possible, also create a little bit of a financial reserve, do your financial planning, especially as the times that we're facing right now is so difficult, but not having that kind of stress, you know, you're gonna be in a better shape, of course, as, you know, towards the kind of a, you know, um, end of this kind of a crazy cycle that we're going through kind of globally at the moment. Many of us also mentioned the idea of leveraging your authentic connections. Again, the authentic connections are really important because again, in my case, I was able to leverage, of course, the people that I met through sports or the people that I met around the world. In your case, it might be, you know, your hobby, your hobby group or your kind of religious group or whatever it makes sense to you. Those authentic connections, I think, again, are really gonna help you, you know, to kind of make, you know, some good conversations, good kind of meetings and therefore leading to some good jobs. And finally, I would say that I know time is kind of, you know, very strange right now, but I would say travel, learn kind of new cultures, experience the world, because definitely that's a great source of inspiration and creativity that will help you as you, of course, figure out kind of your way in, you know, through your kind of a career path. With that, you know, I thank you for the opportunity and I'll pass you now to, to Anthony.
Thank you, Henry. I appreciate that. Uh, so I want to start out by saying thank you to all the veterans and all the veteran supporters who are here today. I appreciate your service. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who put this event on. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing. So I, I, I really appreciate it. You're not letting COVID uh, stop anything. You guys are hard charging. So uh, I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself, uh, my story, and then, uh, you know, some hopefully some tips. Hopefully you can find a nugget in something that I that I talk about today. And I'm sure Nicole will wrap me up because I, I love to talk. So uh, I'll start out with uh, my early days. Um, I grew up um, very hum humble means in uh, the Inland Empire. So school education wasn't a thing for me. I probably wasn't the best of students. Um, and that's how I ended up in the military because there were not too many options for me by the time it was time for me to graduate. And so it was like, okay, the military, there it is. Um, it's good. It was, we were at peacetime then. So I was like, ah, I'll do a couple years. I'll get out. I got in the military and I loved it. It was a great place. It really helped me mature a lot and gave me the skills. I, I think that I had skills within me, but they just weren't brought out until I got into the military. So it was a great place. I love my time there. It really helped me understand who I was as a person, as a leader. So as time kind of went on and Brad kind of touched on it, your life is a little bit different. And so I had to make a decision, where do I want to spend the next 20 years of my life? Is it in the military? Is it out? So after a good six years, I decided, okay, I'm going to get out and I'm going to try my hand at civilian life. Well, I probably wasn't prepared like I thought I should have been. Um, I was just excited to be out and live my life and grow a beard and all kinds of cool stuff. So I, I get out and I wasn't ready. And I had a, I struggled. I struggled really hard trying to find a job. Like I just didn't understand how to equate what I did in the military to what I did in the civilian world. And, you know, I thought people were going to be knocking on my door. Hey, you know, Mr. Brown, you know, you've been deployed and you managed all these people. You're great. That that day never came. It didn't happen for me. I didn't know the resources. So I was a little bit, you know, discouraged and down on, on the time that I served and what I was going to do. Happened to be that some veterans kind of took me in. I think sometimes it takes a veteran to open the door for a veteran. And they said, hey, I, I know what you're going through here. Let's go. So I worked a couple odd and end jobs. They just weren't fulfilling. When you come from a, a servant leader background, that's what you're expecting. That's what you want to do. You want to give that back. So I just, all the jobs I was working in technology, just, you know, they weren't fulfilling. They paid the bills. And then the height of the economy, there was a downturn, the recession. And somebody said, hey, do you want to work for a healthcare company? And I was like, and it was long-term care. So nursing homes. And I was like, I don't know anything about healthcare. I don't, you know, and they, I was like, I definitely don't know anything about nursing homes, but technology is technology. So I said, I'll take it. It's a job. I was there probably six months and realized that's, that's my home. That's where I need to be. And I, and I just appreciated healthcare and what I was doing and changing lives. And I'm not the greatest caregiver. So being a technologist was very helpful. It helped me be a caregiver in that space. So then fast forward, I'm starting to excel. They really saw the, the skills that I had from the military and they said, okay, that, you know, let's, let's put you in, in some positions that are, they're going to really accentuate what you do. So I was fast tracking through that, that company and my career was going. And then I was like, okay, you know, I started thinking, how do I accelerate? What if I, what if this job doesn't work out for me and I need to go somewhere else? And, you know, I had a bachelor's degree and I just saw every other job I was looking for, all my peers, they all had master's degree. So for me, it was just, how do I get those three letters at the end of my name? It wasn't really about the education. It wasn't about anything. It was just, I need those three letters and so I can get a better job. So then I did my Pepperdine was my first choice, but I, you know, a type personality, which I'm sure a lot of us are, we do our research and I checked out all the schools around. And then I went to an information session in Irvine and uh, Desiree is there. See, she, she's on the phone today. And she kind of just kind of talked me through, you know, the different programs. And I was like, uh, okay. I was like, this EMBA program sounds like it might be for me. Other executives, it's flexible for my schedule. So still not really super interested in, you know, the education part, just trying to get, go through the motions. But Desiree is already, you know, chipping away at me. So then I go to the information session and I said, okay. And I was like, oh, this might be more than just three letters. It might be some educational stuff here. So I go to Pepperdine and it's amazing. And I, let me backtrack. 
one of the just like amazing part of it was the yellow ribbon program. And I will tell you, and I, and I'm not, you know, like trying to push this program, but no other school in Southern California gives a yellow ribbon, a scholarship like Pepperdine. And so that should just let you know how much they care about veterans. And I, you, I could go on for hours on the history of veterans at Pepperdine and how they were the first people to start the GI Bill and accepting it, but I won't go there. Um, so, but it's just, it was a great opportunity for me. So then I'm in the program, I'm loving it. And it just really rounded out the rough edges I had. And it wasn't, but the first week in school, I realized, oh, I'm here for the education. Like the three letters mean nothing. It's what I'm learning here and the people I was surrounded by. And then I got, you know, associated with the alumni network and Robin was really hard charging and got me involved, you know, from the start. And I realized this is, this is where I need to be at. And the education was great. And, and as I was growing that I realized I need to be able to talk to other executives and I can't spend X amount of years going to the school hard knock. I need this education. So it really changed the dynamic of who I was and understanding business language and really being able to talk. And then people started looking at me in a totally different light. They're like, oh, well, how do you understand that about finances? How do you understand that about organizational development? I was like, because I go to the coolest school in Southern California. Thank you, probably the nation. So then people were super stoked about that. And I was excited. I was really, then that really accelerated me and accelerated my career from a director to a CIO. And then I was like, okay. And I, I would tell you, hands down, everybody said this, take the risk, take the opportunity, be prepared. I had a professor, I said, hey, I don't know if I want to be a CIO. And he was like, you're going to figure it out. And that, and I said, okay, so I took the job and it was a game changer for me. So once I left Pepperdine and I was already, you know, running, running this technology department, it was, a. Uh, I was like, I think we all have this moment after graduation. I can do anything. I can go anywhere. I'm so smart. I'm all of this. So I started, you know, putting my feelers out through my network and networking and networking. And then all of a sudden a private equity company comes and they're really excited that I went to Pepperdine. They're all about the pedigree. Your pedigree is amazing. And they're from Boston. So they, they know a little something about pedigree. And I'm like, oh, yes, I did go to Pepperdine. Thank you very much. And so that helped me get the job there. It got my foot in the door. And then the confidence that I had from the EMBA program is really what changed it and allowed me to have that conversation with them. And I was able to, to write my ticket to go wherever I wanted to. And it was just such a good experience is that I had the confidence from the program. I was able to use all the skills I had and really do, you know, some really great things. Um, I'm a little similar like Anthony, COVID kind of changed my mentality. I had done great at the last two careers I was at. And so I said, okay, this is some time for me to kind of step back and see if this is really, really what I want to do. And it was a great time for me to go in partnership with, uh, with somebody I knew to start a startup company and senior living. And that's where I'm at. But I would have never had the connections. I would have never had the valuable knowledge or even the courage to make these opportunities if it wasn't for the school. I'm a, a huge proponent of that, that it, it smoothed out my rough edges, but it also gave me the opportunity to be able to talk. Like it's, I, I'm I'm very, I'm an introvert, so I don't like talking to people, but this has gave me the confidence to be able to have the conversations and really sit down in an interview or talk to investors or whoever and know that what I'm talking about is legit and they're going to understand it. So my, my whole transition through it definitely changed. Um, I'm so grateful for the school. If you see the picture, that's uh, if, if you ever click on the business school or on LinkedIn, you'll probably see that picture because I'm all about it. I'm, I rep Pepperdine so hard It's because it's a game changer for me. First person from grad school, my family, it was just, it's, it's just a big deal. So I cannot stress how much Pepperdine has changed who I am and really took the rough spots from a knucklehead from the Inland Empire, a you know, rough guy from the army, and then, you know, just this technician and changed them to an operator. I'm still a technician by trade. I love it, but now I'm in operations and it's just, it's a great opportunity. And, and I don't know that I definitely would have got there as fast or even had the courage if it wasn't for the school. So that's my story. I have a lot more tips for those who are in the breakout room, but I, one thing I will say is don't be afraid to network and don't be afraid to take chances. And for me, that's what, what the school helped me understand about myself 
and it was it was a good opportunity. So with that, um, hopefully I'm right on time, Nicole, and I'll turn it back to you. Wow, thank you, Anthony. What a great uh, wrap up for the testimonials. Thank you for your transparency and your, your honesty about networking. And I'm happy to turn it over to Karen Wise, the Director of Employer and External Engagement to share some career resources available. Thank you. Well, thanks, Nicole. And thanks everyone. I know that I know there's a lot, a lot that still want, that is still wanting to be shared, and and there's a lot of really good information going on. Thank you to the alumni panelists. Your career transition successes are truly inspiring, and this was such a great session. Um, we had an interesting and robust conversation in our group with you, Henry, and thank you so much for that. Um, so many great takeaways, and you know I know that. Hearing about the career and professional development department at this point is something that's kind of an interruption, but think of it as a transition as well, because we are a team that is available to help all of you as you are transitioning, or when if you're thinking about a transition. Um, so, you know, if, if those of you are, are in that stage, whether you're a current student or an alum, please um, know that we have a great team and great resources for you. Um, there's a few of them shared on the slide here that um, you can work with a member of our team to craft your, your strategy and to utilize some of these great tools and resources. Um, if you're at the early stages of your transition, I would say take a look at Career Leader. This is an online assessment that measures your interests and abilities and, and where you are, what might motivate you. And especially if you're thinking about making a transition might help steer you in a new direction. Um, we also encourage students in particular and alumni job seekers to use Handshake because Handshake is, is, the, is where everything happens that's going on with our department and at the school. Um, so you'd wanna keep yourself informed uh, by checking Handshake regularly. Um, and you know, to get started or talk about any of these these services or resources, please feel free to reach out to our department. Um, I've uh, the email that you can use. Email is probably the best way uh, get to reach out and connect with one of us. Uh, our email is cpd at pepperdine.edu. Um, so yeah, I think we're we're probably getting to the time where we're going to close here soon. But I just want to thank again the panelists and encourage everybody that's part of this discussion to you know, reach out, follow up, um, you know, use each other and support each other as you go through your career transition. And we're here to help you with that too. So thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you for the resources and just being here to support. And um, I agree the wealth and um, knowledge that was shared from our panelists, we want that to continue. And again, I just want to take an opportunity to thank you so much for joining our session today. Thank you to our presenters. Thank you to our alumni engagement team for your support. I think the, the wealth of experiences and knowledge that have been presented today are very um, insightful and immeasurable. So thank you. Um, we want to make sure that you stay connected with us. Please reach out on social media through Pep Connect. We have a growing LinkedIn group. We encourage you to join us there um, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're not engaged, we encourage you to do so. Again, the networking form has been shared. It should be coming out in the next couple of days. So please look, be look on the lookout for that. Um, have a great rest of the day. Thank you again.